A few months ago, I made a video about how I'm storing all my files on Discord. Apparently I didn't learn my lesson last time, so here's a follow-up to my get banned by Discord any percent speedrun. And this time, I'm going to be stealing storage from Telegram too. And before you leave a smug comment telling me, no, actually, Telegram allows file storage. Sure, you got me. They kind of advertise that. But I promise this is still quite interesting. By the end of this video, I'm going to be storing files on Telegram and Discord just by moving them into a folder on my computer. But that's a big leap from my previous project that stored files on Discord by uploading them to a web page. So let's look at some improvements to that first. If you haven't seen that video, you can find it here. <coughs> you all had a lot to say in the comments, mostly about how I should be using Telegram, but there were some other things mentioned that I wanted to discuss. First, a question some commenters asked was why not use RAR, which already supports this exact behavior I want, compressing and encrypting files, then splitting them into chunks. Well, because I didn't know that was a thing. It probably would have made my life a bit easier, but writing the code to split files into chunks and encrypting them didn't actually take me too long, and I zipped up most of the files before I uploaded them anyway, so it wouldn't have made the file size much smaller. Another suggestion that a couple of viewers had was to store the information about a file, like its name, size, and the message IDs with the attachment that make it up on Discord itself, for instance with the last message that we send for a file. But with that approach, anytime we want to read a file, we'd have to get all the files in the channel and figure out which is the one that we're interested in, which is doable, but it would make things slower, especially if we have a huge amount of files. We could also have a special message somewhere that keeps track of information about all the files we have stored, and we could store the ID of that message, then retrieve it without having to search the whole channel. But that just sounds like a database with extra steps. Keeping a small database locally with info about our files is a compromise that I'm happy to make. But by far the most frequent question I got was why not use Telegram? Well, like RAR, I didn't know about it. Let's take a look. Telegram, like Discord, is an internet messaging app. Unlike Discord, its website is in Italian. Wait, what? Okay, maybe that's just me. Anyway, there are some differences, but the biggest one that we care about for this project is that Telegram supports file uploads of up to 2 gigabytes for regular users and 4 gigabytes if you have premium which is way better than the 25 megabytes or 500 megabytes for Nitro users that Discord has. And unlike Discord, Telegram sort of advertises their service as file storage. So even though Discord hasn't deleted my files or banned me yet, and I think it's pretty unlikely they ever will, this kind of thing is definitely more blessed by Telegram. So I looked at making my previous application work with Telegram instead of Discord. But another suggestion that a few people mentioned was to create a Fuse program. Fuse stands for File System and User Space. Using libfuse, the reference Linux implementation of this concept, we can write programs in user space that can be mounted as a file system. If that didn't make sense, Fuse lets you run a program on your computer that mounts to a location and lets you read and write files to or from that location, like plugging in a virtual USB drive. This might not seem like a big deal, but here's the cool part. Whenever I interact with a directory that a Fuse program is mounted to, for instance, copying a file to or from it, I'm responsible for writing the logic for how the data will be handled, and oh boy am I feeling irresponsible. libfuse has bindings in Python, so I can write a program in Python that handles writes to the file system by uploading files from my computer to Discord or Telegram as message attachments. For reads, it will download the appropriate files, stick the contents together, and return the result. But from the perspective of my operating system, using this special directory hooked into the program is no different than any other folder. I can copy files to and from this folder the same way as any other. Doing it this way is actually pretty straightforward. In fact, much more than writing a whole server and client like I did before. I really wish I'd known about this back then. All we need to do is extend the base fuse client object and implement the methods for reading, writing, and getting stats about the file. Jumping into it, I'm starting with the in-memory database example from the PyFuse 3 repo. We only need a few modifications to get this working with Discord or Telegram. First, we'll move from an in-memory database to a file-based one, so we can persist the file system across mounts and unmounts. Basically, we want the program to remember the files we stored if the program stops running. We'll also need to add a table to the database to keep track of the Telegram or Discord message IDs with the attachments that make up our files. Aside from the database, we also of course need the logic for uploading and downloading files. For Telegram, this is pretty easy. I'm using the Telethon package to send messages with attachments to a Telegram channel and download them again later. But for Discord, I'm using Discord.py, and doing this kind of thing actually sucks a lot. 
This package is mostly intended to be event-driven from, for instance, a Discord message sent to a channel, but interacting with Discord through Discord.py from another program is not easy. I did some fairly hacky things here, but got it working in the end. Once we have the logic for uploads and downloads done, that's kind of it. We have a working file system that stores data on Discord and Telegram. We can copy files into our directory and see them get backed up on Telegram or Discord. In testing, I noticed that when I had this enable write back cache flag enabled, we get some weird behavior where reads don't always go to the fuse program, so we'll disable that and I'm sure there'll be no consequences of that decision down the road. Okay, now with that done, let's try it out. I set up Samba on my Linux home server where this program's running so I can access this mount for my desktop, which runs Windows. We'll try copying this picture of me from university to the mounted directory to see if things are working. Okay, that's weird. We send a message, then delete it and send another one, and every time the attachment gets bigger by 128 kilobytes until the whole thing shows up. So remember that setting from before that I said definitely wouldn't cause problems later? Yeah, so bad news about that. When the write back cache is disabled, whenever we tell libviews to write a file, it immediately sends every chunk of that file to my program's write function as soon as it receives it. As it turns out, the most that libviews can handle writing at a time on my system is 128 kilobytes. So each 128 kilobytes that libfuse reads, it calls my write function with that chunk. But we might be writing some data to the middle of the file, so we need to know the data that comes before and after, which means that I have to fetch that from Discord or Telegram and add the new data in the right place. This means that with a naive implementation hooked directly to Discord or Telegram, we'd have to upload each chunk of the file many, many times. First, we get just the first 128 kilobytes, and we upload it to Telegram and store the message ID. Then we get the second chunk of data, but we've already written some data to Telegram, so we have to get that first, then put the two chunks together and upload them back to Telegram. Then our write function gets the third piece of file, so we have to get the first two from Telegram, add the third, and upload it again. And so on for however many 128 kilobyte segments there are in the file. This is slow. Every call to write incurs two extra network hops for downloading the previous data, and then uploading the previous data plus the newest 128 kilobytes. And to make it extra terrible, this takes longer and longer every time, because the size of the data increases with every upload and download. For a 2.4 megabyte file, this took a minute and a half. For big files, it'll take a long, long time. But remember, this only happens because we disabled the write back cache, so we're very quickly going to re-enable that. What this does is let libviews pass us bigger chunks of data at a time, so there are fewer back and forths to and from Telegram for writing a file. Enabling the write-back cache makes things better, and we can get up to a megabyte at a time. But this is nowhere near better enough. We really have to optimize away these network hops entirely for this project to be any sort of useful. Our maximum file size in Telegram is 2 gigabytes, so for each 2 gigabyte chunk of file, there should really only be one network call for reads, downloading the data, and at most two for writes, downloading the data from Telegram if the file already exists, then uploading the new contents. Sounds to me like it's time to do some caching. As libfuse calls our write function with data, we'll store the data that we've seen so far in memory and add this next chunk to the end. Only after we've received all parts of the file will we actually upload it to Telegram. Luckily, as it turns out, the last thing that libfuse does when we write a file is to make a call to this release function, which we've ignored until now. But release is called any time the file system's done accessing a file, not just writing, so we can't always write a file to Telegram from this function. When release is called, we'll check if we have cached data for this file handle in our cache that we filled as calls to write happen. If we do have data in the cache, we upload it to Telegram and we're done. This makes things much faster. Instead of all those network calls, we first cache the data locally as we read it, then make only a single write to Telegram or Discord. Now let's talk about reading files. Like write performance, read performance actually also improves when we enable the write back cache. If we've recently read or even written a file, libfuse will cache the contents in the page cache of our system and can retrieve it without calling into our user space program at all. But what about reading a large file from Telegram or Discord if it isn't in the cache? Well, guess what? We've got the same issue that we had before with writes. Libfuse requests only one chunk of file at a time from our user space program. This means that again, if we naively set the read function to simply download the file from Telegram and return the result, every time we read a chunk of a file, we'd have to download the entire file, get just the requested chunk, and return that, 
throwing away the rest of the file we just downloaded. Again, this is absolutely terrible. If Reed is hooked up directly to Telegram or Discord, we'll end up downloading the entire file several hundred times for even a fairly small file. So we also need to cache results of reads for Telegram. Okay, now that we've worked out all of the reading and writing gremlins, let's take a look at performance. Like last time, in a word, it's eh. Here are the upload speeds, comparing my Discord and Telegram Fuse program from this time to the full stack application I built last time. I'm happy that the new and old Discord numbers are pretty close, and it gives me confidence that these are fairly accurate. Discord is faster than Telegram, which makes sense because Telegram does some encryption shenanigans, but uploads are still close. The thing I'm really surprised at here is how slow downloads from Telegram are. I'm not sure why this would be the case. One thing I noticed during testing is that Telethon seemed to lose the connection to Telegram more often than Discord.py dropped the connection with Discord, so maybe that has something to do with it. So what did we learn? Uh, not much. Still don't do this, it's slow and bad. I just created a Ko-Fi page, so consider supporting me there if you liked this video. Also, come say hi on my Discord server. See you next time.